Welcome back to my animal education series. Came here with Cinnamon at the Kansas City Zoo. Hello. Hi. And what do we have back here? We have Eastern Bongo male. So where can you find these bongos in the wild? Um, you can find them in the Congo area in Africa. And what kind of environment is the Congo? Um, it's a very forest uh, area. You can tell they have those stripes, so they're able to be camouflaged very well in those areas that are loaded with trees, and grasslands, and brush. So I'm sorry for lack of a better term, but, term, but how do those uh, horns uh, help them? Um, the, the horns are able to defend off predators, but they're also used to push down trees or things they might want to eat um, so they can get to them and reach them a little bit better. Um, they also use them with other males when they're fighting for a territory or fighting over a female. I know in some antelope species there's some uh, sexual dimorphism between the um, genders. Is that the case in the species? The females look exactly like the males. The main difference is the size. So males can weigh up to close to 800 to 1,000 pounds while our females you know, only usually reach four to 500 pounds. So they're twice as large. And what kind of animals would try to prey on uh, bongo? Um, the larger carnivore species um, like dogs, the painted dogs, or um, species like the leopards, they'll eat on those because they're larger and stronger in size and be able to take down a bongo. And what kind of enrichment is provided for the bongo? Um, whatever we do, it'll be to, so they can use their natural behavior. So uh, at, uh, objects that we would hang from trees so they could try to get it down, like their food, like their alfalfa that we have. Um, other objects like boomer balls or spindles where they can knock it around with their horns and manipulate it. Those are the types of items that we use. Are these bongos endangered? They are an endangered species, um, like many of our African species, um, due to human conflict or human encroachment on their uh, habitat. Uh, so habitat deforestation is an issue uh, with bongo. And are they part of an SSP program? They are part of an SSP. We've been recommended for breeding to two of our females that we have. So we have three bongo total here at the Kansas City Zoo. Uh, we rot rotate the females out with him, so hopefully one day we'll be successful. So could you go into more detail about how an SSP program works? Well, the SSP stands for a Species Survival Program, and what it is is someone is in charge of the whole population of bongos. Um, so they do breeding recommendations and transfer recommendations to better figure out how the best way to grow that species in under human care. Um, so we receive three of, all three of our bongos from another facility, uh, from different facilities for the breeding and transfer plan. Um, in some of our SSPs, we may just be helping hold an animal until it's ready for breeding or um, be a part of that breeding program. Um, so that's how we, we, it's worked with our bongo here. We have our, the male and two females, and SSP is being hopeful that one of those females will have offspring um, so we can continue to grow the bongo SSP. Uh, in AZA institutions. I mean, let's hope that it's successful. Yeah, we do hope it's successful. Nothing's cuter than a bongo calf. <laughs> I think most baby animals are yeah, cute in general. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, thank you so much for telling us about the bongo. No problem. Glad you're here. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.